What's up YouTube? I know it's been a long time since I've done a video, but hopefully this video will explain why it's been so long. So I'm just going to basically do quite a long video on my, not my whole collection, but most of it. And it did used to be quite a lot bigger than this, but I have thinned it out and decided to focus on a certain time period and what type of shells came from that time so basically I shall start off over here and I'm just not going to explain what everything is because surely some of you will know what it is but this is nice German mortar and French mortar and a couple of guns but um, they aren't mine and I've got a lot of bayonets well I've got a few anyway so before I go any further, I'm just going to say that everything here is safe and legal to own. I have nothing that's dangerous. So, okay, I'll get on to the MG42 on its tripod. My German rocket launcher. Um, my Kampfpanzer, I think that's how you say it. There it is. Yeah, my Mark 1 Bren. And now I'll get onto the shells that I have. I'll start off here. Um, I'm pretty sure you've seen that French gas shell before, but I'll just go on and then. Um, these two section shells here is a 12 pounder on the right, 15 pounder on the left, and these are actually for sale at the moment on eBay. They're not um, together like this, but I think I'm going to remove the ones I have and put them on together with this stand. So I'll just move on that way for a moment. Here we have flat top 17 pounder, RML 4 inch, bore war 12 pounder, and I'll move these back. A 3.7 inch shrapnel, Mark 3 15 pounder. This one is actually dated 1899 and stamped on the bottom 15 pound and mark 3 so I'll move on to the next one, I've got a few more 15 pounders and I sectioned one with the inner cage um, tube, cup and push plate and if there's any fuses or shells you want me to do a separate video on um, just leave it in the comments and I'll do that so next we've got a British 2.75 inch, I think you can see it there, Mark 1. That's quite nice. And we've got 20 pounder, armor piercing cat, ballistic cat. Then right, four, four and a half inch shrapnel Mark 1, uh, with the number 82 fuse on it. And if I just quickly take this out, I can show you the base. And this is all completely stamped. Four and a half inch howitzer Mark 1, dated 1915, 1913, sorry, made by VSM. So I'll move up to the next row. I've got a few of my early French shells, which, if you haven't noticed by now, I, I've focused on mainly British World War One and pre World War One and I'm trying to go for the best condition shells I can find but most of them are in relic condition and slightly cleaned and we'll move on one pounders with a VSM British one pounder here which I've shown in my video before and a few other shells so different two pounders and then a couple of Boer War three pounders, one made by EOC and the other I um, I can't see on it but next we got a couple of German shells, just uh, 77s and then got a nice Belgian shell, Turkish shell next to it and another Turkish one, both different Turkish fuses. Now I move down here to a 
few more of my Boer War shells. Here I've got a Mark V 15 pounder dated 1900. I've got a Mark VII 12 pounder dated 1908. A Mark I 12 pounder dated 1887. I don't know if you'll be able to see it properly. There you are. And another Mark V 15 pounder there. So we've up to a few of my front shells and they're just normal French 75mm, this is some, there's a ballistic gas shell and normal gas and then shrapnel and now to the top row we've got mostly 18 pounders up here but we've got this is a prototype 18 pounder high explosive and you'd have probably seen this in Evo's video because this was his but he's given it to me now and here we got a Mark 9 18 pounder. Got a nice unfired 18 pounder there. And um, we got a Mark 11 18 pounder with original paint there. And this is a Mark 3 18 pounder with 101 fuse. So that's a high explosive one. And um, here's a Mark 11. You can see there. Mark 11 18 pounder with original paint. We've got a ballistic capped 25 pounder that is. Then sectioned 18 pounder with cup, push plate and tube. And we've got a Mark 1 a 13 pounder and Mark 2 13 pounder. Both in Mark 2 casing and Mark 1 casing. Now I'm going to pan around to the top here. It's you can't see very well, I'll get some light on that. And there we just have ma mostly World War II shells. There's some Bofors 40 mils, a couple of nice smoke mortars, and some 25 pounders at the top. From left to right, there's a smoke 25 pounder, high explosive 25 pounder, and practice chemical 25 pounder, and then a Mark 7 low drive band 25 pounder. And here in the front, there's a section one with the smoke canisters so now I'm going to move down onto my fuses and now the majority of these fuses I've dug up myself so you can see there's the Boer War 56 Mark IVs and there's a number 60C there in the middle there's, a, there's mostly just those two types there and then transit plugs and some other odds and ends in the back there you can't see it very well because of the lighting but there's a nice number 80 hang on I'll get that one out for you so number number 82 there you, are, you can see that it's a nice unfired one and now I'll move to this shelf this is where the best of the fuses are at the moment and I'll just go over them slowly so you can see what's in there but any you want me to do a separate video on let me know so it goes German then there's Turkish there in the middle French all at the back then Russian then there's a Japanese one there there's the British number 80 and 44 yeah that's quite nice and some British views at the front you've seen a few of these before and now I move down, this is just a shelf with British fuses on it that I've dug up mostly. There's number 80s and 106s. There's a number 62 Mark II there. And this one's quite nice, it's a Mark I number 80 with a shrapnel ball wedged in the side of it there. It's a quite nice piece. And there's some World War II number 221 fuses for the 25 pounders. And then as we go down, it's just German fuses. The lighting's not very good, so you can't see them, but you've seen most of them before. And, and then there's a few of the shells there. There's a 17 pounder hidden away there. You've seen this unfired 3.7 AA, and a few others you've seen. Um, I've shown you one of these in a previous video, my SMLE Lee Enfield. But since then, I've got another one dated 1917. And a few other odds and ends there. Then I'll go into my 
large fence shells. I don't know what size they are, but they're quite nice. And then down here to my British ones, we've got a British 6 inch high explosive, 5 inch high explosive, which is a practice one. And you see how that one's blown quite nicely. They got a 60 pounder high explosive, and then two 60 pounder shrapnels, oh, three 60 pounder shrapnels, sorry. Four and a half inch high explosive, 4.7 inch shrapnel, 5 inch shrapnel, 5 inch shrapnel again, and it just goes on with 5 inches, and then we go on to the 5 inch high explosives with economy drive bands. You can see how they're much shorter than these ones, and this one in particular, if I just take that off and show you the base of it, it's quite nicely stamped. To Mark three, it's quite nice, and then you can see this five inch here. It's also another practice one which has been shot. So you can see there's a bullet hole there and another indentation there. Then this five inch has actually bowed out slightly, so it's half exploded but hasn't been enough to actually make the shell crack. And here we've got one of the best 5 inches I've found with a number 54 Mark III fuse you can see it with original paint on it it is scratched and damaged but you can see the original paint there and then we move on to this which I have no idea what it is apart from it says on the primer which I'll show you in a moment it says it's a RML for rifle muzzle loaded and it it's a very large size, it's six and a half inches across. So if I just show you the base, you can see in there this it would have been filled with powder and then fired kind of like a mortar I'd have thought. But you can't see the stamping on it very well. But it does say RML and it's dated 1951. So that is pretty much it for this video. There's not much more I'm gonna I need to show you, but if you want me to show you anything in particular, please let me know. So thanks for watching.